and welcome to part two of this week's broadcast. I do apologise, my machine totally froze and whirled and crashed and I had nothing after it. I had no broadcast software, nothing set up. So I hope and pray you managed to figure out that that was some devastating freeze you waited around, you thought, oh, there's nothing happening here. Went back to YouTube, saw that there's another live broadcast, and then you can carry on your conversations. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what the split is between those who are in the old chat and those who are in the new. Um, and I also have a dilemma, which, of course, is any questions that you posted up to that point, I may not be able to get. I'm going to try and get them. I do have... Um, a option which said restore windows and it did keep the chat which is great so I'm going to paste that there just so I have a copy of it um, but I do also want to know if anyone is listening at all to this other broadcast I'm just checking out the stream it has started again it's two minutes uh, we do have some people joining in that is good um, here we go again, exclamation bar, back, highly, we can hear you, great, wonderful. Let's pretend all of that never happened. <laughs> I'll stitch it together in the edit, if the, we have the original half of this broadcast um, stored somewhere. Hopefully we do, hopefully YouTube have been very clever and have kept it, I just need to go off and find it later on. Um, I'm not sure what the crash was, uh, it certainly wasn't the software, I think it was perhaps the machine's been on all day, and or it's the fact this is the first broadcast I've increased the resolution to 1080p, so there's a lot more data going through the system, so maybe that's it. But you know, if we find out again, we'll look for similarities and know for a fact, but for, for right now, I'm just going to like the universe punishing me for something I've not done yet. So I'm going to go straight on to the second thing I wanted to show you, which was Object Tools. Object Tools is basically a modified version of how to manipulate objects. So if I select a barrel, drop it into our level, like so, you'll notice something right away. There's now a yellow outline. That's a highlighter. And even though we've still got other sort of versions of a highlighter, that's the one we're going to end up with. So this sort of box that you currently get, say for the Friday bill, you won't get that. It will just be the outline, which is much better than the highlighters we've had in the past. But here's a couple of things that you can now do with the new object tool system. I can just drag that object straight in. You see? I don't have to click and then drop it down. I've just dragged it straight in. Um, I can do that again with a different object, you see, it does it as before, I've selected an object and I can place it down, but then I can just drag it straight in from there and place another one down. Another cool idea is when you highlight an object, let's say you've got a big object library up here, but you just want to copy that one, you do the same, you see, you've now got this current object area, so you can just drag that one in. So it's a very quick way of cloning objects because they're actually listed here on the left hand side. And another thing I'd like to show you is how you actually move objects around. Remember the old widget system? Uh, it wasn't universally popular. And uh, for new users, it might be a bit tricky figuring out three axes and all the rest of it. Well, with um, Genguru Max, you just drag it around. So you just click, hold, drag. Click, hold and drag. Click, hold and drag. You've now got two modes. You've got horizontal, which is what this one is. You've also got vertical, so you can click move it vertically and now you can move it up and down and you've also got it on a toggle so I can switch between doing horizontal and vertical back to horizontal super super simple way of just moving objects around now you'll probably have remembered in the announcements for this build we've also not only got additions to the manipulation of objects but you can group them as well so what I can do is I can highlight um, these barrels, so let's highlight those two, and then I can select this button at the bottom called Group Objects. Select that, and as you can see, it's now created a group. So these two are now part of a two barrel group. I can edit that group, so I can move the objects individually within the group, and then when I've finished, I can finish editing, and now we're actually at uh, the objects in a slightly different arrangement for that group. You can have multiple groups. So I'll select these different barrels and make a group out of that. So now I've got these 
or I can have these which can move around like so and I can also select that group and ungroup them so the idea is these are now separate barrels again whereas this is still two objects in its own group so it's basically create the group um, ungroup them so delete the group and be able to edit a group as well and it's 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 pretty powerful feature because let's just get rid of these for a second let's say you do have this group like so and you're happy with the group that you've made you can just drag in more versions you see you've got a group just like you can drag in an individual object you can drag in whole groups that you've previously created um, now it's pretty boring just looking at barrels but you can imagine if you spent a lot of time creating a group it could even be like a whole room of your building that you've laid out then you just drag out 10 of them so that's the power of the group system there's a few little tweaks we still want to make you might see some of those tweaks in the Friday build more likely and as part of our dev plan it will be a, a week from now because we're going to give you the community the opportunity to also feedback on the object movement system the object tools object grouping and if your words make sense then we are going to include those fixes and tweaks and changes into a future build in addition to all the other things um, that we'll be releasing every week all the way through 2021. Just checking out the stats, it looks like most people have found us again. <laughs> I don't know, I would, uh, from the end user's perspective, I don't know how much of a glitch it was, although I just disappeared for five minutes. But I'm really pleased that mostly everyone has found me again. I'm now going to look for um, the chat session. I do have a chat session, but I don't think I'll get it from there, will I? I'm going to have to pull it from here. So you won't be able to see the chat breakout because I think it only collects it. Let's have a go. Um, maybe we still have it. We have this, and it's a big long list. And um, he's live streaming again was the last thing. So this is the old chat. So to refer to the old chat, <laughs> I'm going to read this live. And then we're going to go to the other chat, which I think is uh, it's a different chat window. But I'll be, I'll be jiggered if I can figure out how to get that one on. So we'll just start with this. So this was the original one, and I'm going to look for your original question. It's only first, for that first come is first serve. So here is a question. This is from St. Cross 62. Uh, if you save a standalone in VR, will they also run in a desktop mode? In other words, standalone that are VR supported. Mm, if you save a standalone in VR, will they also run in desktop mode? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, you run your executable. You don't have any VR hardware. It just runs it as a regular game. And if you've got VR plugged in, then boom, you're playing it in VR. So it's the same executable, whether it's VR or non-VR. So make it super convenient for you. Here's a question from Marty Malibu. Uh Will you ever consider to publish your own game in FPSC Classic and No Max, like App Game Kit? Um, me publish my own finished game? Probably not. I'll be far too busy working on the engine side to sit down and write an entire game. That's not to say that we couldn't find some genius level designers who could work on a 20 level extravaganza and then we publish it for them. That was certainly possible. Uh, but me personally, or uh, TDC as a collective, are probably not our priority creating entire games. Although there is benefits to being able to do that. Here's a question from uh, Pan. Um, have you already started working on features like Dialogue Systems Interface Creator? Uh, we've planned them, we've designed them and we've planned them, but the work hasn't started on the Dialogue System and work hasn't started on the Interface Creator. We do have a plan and we're going to release them every week. Um, we're generally not going to say what's going to happen three months from now or two months or one month. It's not that the plans will change as such, it's just that we don't want to build up a lot of expectation and then you're going to get three months of rumour, so by the time we release it, it bears no resemblance to what everyone's been talking about. So we're going to actually complete finish, finish features and release them, and then we can talk about stuff that exists. I think that's a better way, way around. Here's a question from Erin Chase. Uh, hi Lee, any updates on considering adding VR back in? Yeah, well there's been conversations, it's not entirely out of the question. Uh, direct your comments and your conversations to the Game Guru forums. 
and uh, you know, let us know why you think it's a very good idea to put VR back in. We are warming to it, but we just need a lot of community back in to sort of override the fact that it's not complete. We'll release VR in whatever was stated is in now, but it's half baked, it's incomplete. And some users will say, oh, it's ridiculous, it's half baked and it's incomplete. And we want to avoid that, it's ridiculous commentary. So we're not adding stuff in if it's not in our eyes finished. And VR is definitely not finished yet. Um, looking for one more question before we run out, I think, on this thread. Is the height options for fog? And if so, are you high, um, if you are higher up, you can see the top of the fog and not what is below. Yeah, there's, there's, there's probably a need for some additional one or two extra parameters for fog. Right now, the ones that are available are in our design. That's the ones that we're absolutely going to ship with. If a lot of sort of anecdotal evidence is put forward to us to say, look, you literally can't create this scene because you're missing that parameter in the fog control, then we'll listen. Um, so this is probably the point where I, <laughs> I absolutely didn't forget to pay my internet bill, but yeah, this is where it started buffering. Chop, chop, chop. See you next week. Off he goes. That was quick. La, 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 la. And as you can see, it didn't really come back. It probably started a new section. And so all the questions after that point are somewhere else. So let's see if we can find them, shall we? Um, I'm now looking at my broadcast. I'm going to switch off that because maybe that's preventing me seeing the new ones. And go to this little toggle. Press refresh, and then hopefully we get to see a, a chat out pop up, which we don't. So that pop up's gone forever. Fear not, though. I have another screen, and I can see all the questions. So you will be able to see the questions on the screen that you're watching now, but I can see all the questions. So I'm going to try and find the first one. Um, yeah, everyone can hear me. Great, going through. Let's see, have I, have I destabilized everyone? Or do you want to ask one more question? Um, here we go. So will you be sorting out the vegetation and terrain as it is crashing and tearing up? Absolutely. The terrain that's been worked on um, soon. It's not immediately there's something else that we're working on that we feel is more important than terrain, but once that's done, then we'll be on to terrain. And once we start working on terrain, after a short while after that, you'll start getting updates with the finished, fast, optimized, storage-friendly terrain with all the things that we want to bring to the terrain. But you're gonna have to wait. But don't worry, there will be a big, long gap. There's lots of other things we're going to want to show you between now and then. But by any means, this is not the final terrain. So don't worry about that. Looking for another question on my secret chat board. Um, I'm glad you increased the res. It all looks poor before. But I'm glad it works. I was concerned the bandwidth would just basically go crazy and you just get a lot of stuttering. So if you can see 1080p and it's all nice and fast and you can hear me, then that's great. Looks like that one worked and we can do 1080p from here on in. Looking for uh, the clock, actually. Now, five minutes, I'm going to deduct for the for the, the incident let's call it the incident but even deducting five minutes i am five minutes over um my 50 minute ideal goal so i'll pick two more questions in the order they were answered and then we'll take the rest onto the game guru forums and that next question is from fga freecon the question is is the same question that i already answered in relation to the fog height so we get to skip that and move on to the next one i need I need learn code for this software. That's from Jordan. Um, no, it's a non-coding solution. You just select your objects, drag them in, press a button, hey presto, you've got a game. The more effort you put in, the better the game is. And you still have the option of coding in the Lua programming language for your own logic if you want to. But it's certainly not mandatory. And as that was the, uh, the second to last authentic non-repeated question i get to ask one more and this is from super confidential man what about rotate and scale yeah rotate and scale is available as you can see in the top so i'll select this object we've got rotate as you can see you can rotate it through a slider and you can also press the r key to rotate 
And for scale, you select the scale and you've got a slider to make the object bigger and smaller. And that's how you would adjust the scale in the object. The idea is there isn't any secret knowledge about how to use widgets or lots of secret keys. Everything that you want to do with an object, moving it, rotating it and scaling it, is now extremely simple and available right from this right panel. And any time you are get confused over sh keyboard shortcuts, we do put them down in the right as well. We, even with tooltips, so when you hover over, you'll actually see what all of the different things mean. And I think I went into a little bit more detail about that in a previous, in a previous broadcast. So that's the software. There's more to come. Um, they'll continue to come from now every Friday. They'll get something new to look at. And I'm really excited to talk about those things. Please do check this out on Friday. Um, if you find anything that you think, oh, that's a bug, or this is weird, or this is different, please feedback. Um, very shortly, we'll be integrating a bug tracker. So you don't even need to leave the software in order to um, report anything that you found, which will obviously, again, plug into a system that will be super efficient, will allow us to find, reproduce those bugs, fix them really, very quickly, and get them into um, builds. Rather than waiting months, you'll be waiting weeks, if not a week, for your bug to be fixed. That's the system we're building right now and having in place. So that's this week's broadcast. Again, there'll be another one Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, BST. I just want to remind anyone that's absolutely new to this channel, this isn't a regular occurrence doing a break halfway through about the old school intermissions. It was a genuine massive system crash. The reason is yet to be defined. I'm going to figure that out once this broadcast ends. Uh, but you can get the pre-order at 25% off which will give you access to all these Friday builds. So the things that I demonstrate on Wednesday, you'll get to play with on Friday. So I hope you enjoyed the drama. Uh, I'll try and get a little bit more professional for next Wednesday. So until then, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.